Hello, my name is Vsin, and this is a snapshot of Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment. Now this game came out on April the 24th, 2014 for the PlayStation Vita in Japan. Um, just to note, there is also an Asia version coming out in May 2014, as well as an English version coming out in summer 2014, whenever the hell that is. So this game is supposed to be the Sword Art Online RPG. I'm going to say this right from the outset. In short, this is an HD version or a plus version of Sword Art Online Infinity Moment, the PSP game that came out... Uh, I didn't bother to look it up, but it came out a little under a year ago, actually. So this is essentially the Infinity Moment content and gameplay with a hollow fragment and hollow area. Now... The screen you're staring at right now, I would just like to make note about the way this game saves, because it's a bit of a temperamental asshole like that. This is an autosave, entirely autosave game. Completely autosave, as in there is no save at this location, or even force autosave. It just autosaves whenever the hell the game feels like it, with no prompt given whatsoever. I find this to be annoying, only because when you die, because that's when the game loads the previous save state, because you know in Sword Art Online, Aincrad, you're supposed to die for real, but this is a game that can't really kill you off instantly. So when you die, or when you quit the game via the exit screen, you know, this screen, because there is no exit option in the game, when you use that, then it'll load from the previous save, but there is no real way to know what the previous save is. So far as I can tell, it's triggered by zone changes exclusively which becomes annoying because then for example if you like change an option in the options menu for example then it won't register the change anyways the usual basics um separate audio sliders i believe these two are for boss music and then battle music um there's also camera invert controls as well as camera scroll speed if you look in the bottom right hand corner that is save data format it it allows you to completely destroy your save data but as noted before, due to the way the save system works, you can only have up to one save data that you cannot load or check at whim. So yeah, I I really I probably pissed off a lot of people by talking about save data, but I feel I have to get that out of the way because it's just because of how annoying it is to handle. Anyways, here we are in floor 76, the hub town. This is the only this as far as I can tell, this is the only hub town where you can run around and look at shops and crap. Um, hmm. Weapon upgrading. Should I bother to cover that right now? Nah, not gonna bother. Let's crack open this menu because this is where I can explain some crap. Um, so first of all, equipment. Nothing too special. I will say, though, that this is... Let's say it's similar to Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Basically, your combat style is dependent on what weapons you have equipped. In this case, I'm equipping a main weapon with no offhand. Uh, no, I'm not trying to be cutie toe. I just really like one-handed with no offhand, even before I knew what Sword Art Online was. You can also equip sub-weapons, so for example, you can see on the left side, main skill, you can see then it's dual wielding because I have sword selected. I choose a shield, then it becomes dual wielding plus a shield. Um, just as a random note, shields actually completely remove your ability to dodge, but dramatically increase your defense. You go over to the main hand, and if I just pick like a rapier or some crap, or maybe a curved sword, katana, dagger, axe, hammer. There are a bunch of different weapon types. This is what determines your combat style. Um, body, arms, legs, ring, back, waist, charm. These are just, basically they're all just stat sticks, for lack of a better term. Um, the only thing, other thing to note is that arm, body, arm, and leg items will change your appearance. But I don't believe head items do because I haven't seen a single head item that changes appearance at all. So, eh. Skills. Now, skills are the more important system in this game. Basically, it well, it's pretty grindy. I'm not going to even try to lie about that. Basically, you gain skills by smacking stuff a lot, for lack of a better way to say it. Really, it's that simple. Um, you just smack stuff with a weapon. You smack them enough times, and you'll gain mastery, as you can see on the left. Increased mastery gives you access to additional tiers of the weapon. So, for example, in order to get level 5 of the, of the sword, I need to get a 800 mastery points, which takes one hell of a lot longer than I expected, but whatever. 
Um, as far as I can tell, the gain for mastery is logarithmic, meaning that early on you will gain mastery points extremely quickly and then it will slow down. When you gain more mastery points, you will also gain skill points listed in the top right corner. Those, I believe, are gained at a flat rate compared to mastery. So if you gain like 10 mastery... I don't even know how many mastery points you need. Like maybe if you gain 10 mastery, you gain one skill point. I've never calculated it, so I'm not going to bother. Anyways, um, if you go into one of these tiers, for example, you can see that there are various different sword skills that you can unlock. So I can unlock this strength fight. Um, also, if you look at the bottom, the, where the sword skill description is listed. You can see sword skill, I'm... Uh, vertical, I think. I think that's the name of the sword skill. You can see one hit, as well as strength 40%, vitality 40%. Those basically are the skill scaling. What stats affect the damage of the sword skill. And then to the right of that, there is also a special effect. I'm not 100% sure what that effect is. I think it's increased accuracy when using sword skill, but I could be wrong. All, as well as the SP cost. So you can see I just unlock it. Let's go to the customization window. You can see here, um, you can also <coughs> place sword skill, battle skills, and items onto your skill palette. Skill palette is accessed while by essentially holding down L or R while in combat. Pressing down L or R at the same time will also open this menu up, but still. Anyways, you can also see these other things like hiding, avoid, skill, sword master, and stuff like that. Let's crack open sword master. These are gained by getting to the certain tier in the weapon. So, for example, if I get to dagger level 3, then I get access to avoid. All these come with two things. First of all, it comes with a passive. I, I've never bothered to check all the passives. I think this one gives me plus 10 evasion, but still. You also get access to a bunch of battle skills. As far as I can tell, all the battle skills in the game are buffs or debuffs of some sort. Whether it's a health buff, or an armor buff, or a speed buff, or debuffs, or whatnot. And basically, you can access those and you can put them on your skill bar. Items are items. You consume them, you equip them. Nothing special. Friends list. Just want to get a few mechanics out of the way. You can see, um, for example, if you look at the right side of the screen, rank 4 on the right side of the screen. Then you can see Asuna rank 3, Silica rank 3. Let's flip all the way to Argo rank 2. Um, if you don't know, Argo is from Sword Art Online Progressive, which is the Aincred remake novel, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but still. Um, Yasa Shinon from Gungale Online. Leafa... Um, yep, that is actually Leafa in this game. Streya is the original character from Infinity Moment. Philia is the original character for um, Hollow Fragment. And a whole bunch of random characters who are... I don't know. I think they're handmade, but at the, at the same time, they're just random. And they're there, and they're extra party members that, for more customization and stuff. I'm, I'm really not sure. Either way, when you see that rank which was my original point, the rank corresponds to how much affection they have for you, for lack of a better term. Um, you gain ranks pretty much by doing anything at all with the character. Like having conversations, joining their party will give you points, giving them items will give you points, um, randomly in the middle of combat they will give you points, like just doing shit gives you points in this system. Um, as far as I can tell, the only reward is special actions that can be done in city. Uh, let's just see if I can do anything right now. Nope. Either way, there are special actions you can do. I think it's like hold hands and princess hold, but that's about it. Other than that, there's like conversation events becoming easier and a whole bunch of other little things. Basically, just spend time with your wife who receive rewards. Um, the other... Let's see, hollow map and implement. I'm going to go to the hollow area first to show that off, which is in the opposite direction because I hate the way this place is laid out. Oh well. So, let's see here. I'll show off some combat first. Holy shit, it's already been 10 minutes. Oh well. Now let's head over here to the teleporter. There's the quest giver over there. He gives quests. Um, sure, why not? Let's quickly talk to him since I got some new quests open. Yo. Uh, first option is accept, second option is cancel, third option is turn in, fourth option is what the quest giver does, which is not very helpful since you can't, since at least if you're watching this video, chances are you don't understand Japanese. I think. But anyways, you can just accept quests as they come. Like, yay, I have to kill stuff. Kill ten rats. Okay, they're probably not rats, they're probably a little stronger than rats, but still. 
And let's grab the other quest. These are both floor 81 quests, I believe. Whatever. I don't know, I also find this animation to be a little bit long, although I get the immersion from having that little menu pop up. Still. Oh, that was collect items and I already have a bunch of them. Whatever. So, let's see here. Should I go to floor 81 or should I go to hollow area? Let's go to the hollow area. First option is hollow area. Second option is teleport to other zones. Uh, so this is where the control panel is. That's also where Philia is. Um, all the story I know so far is that for some reason she's trapped in the hollow area and can't get out. That's about it. Quite literally, I have not seen any of the promo cutscenes yet. Maybe I have to get higher level, I don't know. But so far, well, let's just get run around in the hollow area for now. Um, so the other menu I have to show you. The map is just shows you where shit's going on, what rank you are and stuff. The second one, though, is <coughs> the implement element system. What does it do? I have no bloody clue. I'm sorry, I have no idea what's going on here. The only thing I know is this. You pick one, you press OK, you check start, you set it. When you complete hollow missions, which for lack of a better term are dynamic events that happen in the hollow area, when you complete those missions, then you will gain hollow points. And when you gain enough hollow points while having one of these selected and fulfill some condition I don't understand, then you will unlock it and gain an upgrade of some sort, I assume. If someone can read Japanese and can interpret this for me, please let me know what the hell's going on here, because I have no idea what's happening. Sorry. I'm just, I can't understand this, and I just can't find enough information on it. I can't even find a Japanese at wiki and trans to translate it. I can't find it. Sorry. Um, this one here is the map, as I mentioned earlier. All you really need to know is that you can pick an area. It's like, okay, this has Apollo missions happening over here, as well as over here, and stuff like that. Also, if you hold down R, you can see where, more precisely where everything is in corresponding to wherever the hell other stuff is. So, for example, there is a hollow mission north of that location and whatnot. So, let's just head out. Now, this is where you can... There are various little teleporters in the hollow area. Ugh, I hope I can figure out which one is what. Ah, uh, shit. Oh, uh, whatever. Let's just go to the first one. I'll just drop you in the field and you can start fighting crap. Let's start by killing some monsters. So first of all, you initiate combat by pressing circle. If you just walk up to them and just stand there, you'll perform these auto attacks. These auto attacks will generate SP. Also, when a partner does a quote like that, then what you want to do is perform a sword skill. Then if they do a little quote like that, then they will you'll do a combination attack. Sword skills are accessed by opening your skill palette. Mo well, most of them anyways. By holding down L or R, as you can see, there's also the call palette where you can tell your ally to do stuff. And most of the time it works, but still. Also, you can see the circle button. If I press the circle button with the right timing, as you can see with the circle that shows up in the middle of the screen, then I will do that little combo attack, and at the end of the combo, it'll automatically combo into a sword skill. Um, crack open this menu real quick. As you can see over here, it's set as burst. So, for example, if I want to set vertical to the sword skill, I press square there. Now do the combo again. Vertical. And then I deal damage. But I like horizontal square, so I'm going to keep that. Um, tap the top right corner of the touchscreen. You'll open up the map. This will show you where everything is. I'm just going to run around and avoid fights for now. Hopefully I will find a hollow mission or I will get creamed by some really overpowered enemies that will wipe my wipe the floor with me. I don't know. Since I rarely visit this place since the level cap spikes really fast. Like it will spike by about 10 per zone you pass through. Like for example, oh, these guys are only 86 so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, let's see here. Crack open the map, see if there are any hollow missions in around here. Wait for that to finish. Alright, let's just try to get through here, I guess. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna walk past everyone, because to be fair, trying to fight everything in sequence would take too much time and it would probably bore you more than the menus. Just walk past these guys, I'm just gonna aggro everything along the way. 
aggro everything up to here. And I'm gonna combo one, two, three horizontal for AoE damage. Take them all out at once. Also, if you press up or the bottom left of the touchscreen, you can say nice to your partner. Um, you will get relationship points and generate 50 SP if you have the timing right. I'm not sure what allows it to trigger more often or not, but whatever. Let's go into the next area. This is probably an area with monsters that will murder me. Or is this one of the safer areas? Oh, it's one of the safer areas. Okay. Let's just get past here. You can see on the map the purple dots. Those are the hollow missions. So, I don't know. That could, that mission could murder me, or it might not. So I'm just going to run past everything. Same as before. AoE them all back down, and then we'll see what happens. These guys have an unlimited aggro radius for some reason. So, whatever. Oh, let's see. And take care of this guy. Alright, let's see what this holo mission is all about. Am I going the right way? Nope, I'm going the wrong way. Whoops. Alright, let's go in the correct direction this time. Try to sneak behind this guy so I don't have to aggro him. Let's see. What is this mission? I keep forgetting what this mission actually is. Oh yeah, this one. I failed it the last time I tried it, so I don't know what's actually going on. <sighs> Let's see. Um, blah da 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 da. Four. I think it needs a Nectar Mites? Yep, Nectar Mites. You can sort of tell by the Kazakana. It's supposed to be killing the Nectar Mites. And there you go, Hollow Mission complete. Because the last time I tried... Oh, failure? Wait, what? So what the hell was the mission? I can never figure it out sometimes. Sometimes it's kill stuff, sometimes it's don't kill stuff. Uh, the last time I killed the big guys, this time I killed the small guys. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Oh well, when you succeed, you're supposed to gain extra stuff. Well, I don't know, let's just keep exploring for a bit. And we'll head back to town and show you other systems. I don't know, I think I'll just run into annoying opponents, get murdered by them. What the hell is this? Sign of some sort? I don't know, I've never been this way. Onwards for great adventure, I guess. And now they're level 103, awesome. At least I can still kill them. Eh, stun lock. Oh, another horizontal should take care of him. Yep. Nice. Say nice. Hey, he leveled up. Also, the only way to level up in this game is to grind. A lot. There's a lot of grinding in this game. Don't let it intimidate you, seriously. Like, literally, you grind monsters by just beating them up like this repeatedly. You keep smacking monsters, you gain all the stats you need. <laughs> That's really how the entire game runs. Although, I, su I suppose I should bring it up now. A lot of this game revolves around a more traditionally hockey MMO style, rather than an action RPG style. Damn it, Kirito, do more auto attack so I can regenerate SP. Like, it's more about hotkey MMO stuff. Like, you notice that I'm not trying to actively dodge. There is a parry button in this game. In this case, it's triangle. You also get an active stun, which is square. At least that's what the default bindings are, but still. Just run around here. But for the most part, your mitigation will be automatic mitigation in the form of defense stat and, and evasion stat. Oh, I popped out the other side. Good to know. Head back in, go get murdered. Or I can just finish up here and head off into the floor. Oh well. Honestly though, the floor isn't too much. I will say that um, environment variety so far hasn't been particularly good, but 
I don't know, maybe it's just this part of the game. I have noticed that every single one of the floor dungeons, um, wh which you need to pass through in order to get to the next floor, they all have the exact same design, even though the layouts are all different. There are also some little gimmick things, like push switch to activate something or another and stuff. Like Those gimmicks do exist in this game as well, so there is some decent variety. But again, this is hotkey MMO play style. Uh, I believe this is a place where I can get murdered, is it? Let's just, Let's find out. Do, 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 do. Oh, the yellow pulse is only level 90. Oh, and I've been through this place before. Huh. Oh, well, uh, um, is there anything that can murder me in here? Nope. All right, just get out. Honestly, I think this is enough of the field exploration. I've more or less shown you how this game operates in terms of combat. Let's get to the more other stuff. Oh, by the way, there is also ad hoc multiplayer in here. There is no online multiplayer, unless, of course, there's like ad hoc party or something. But as far as I can tell, there's no online multiplayer in this game. Let's just get out of here. Although you can do the multiplayer stuff as a single player by using all the NPCs you've collected, like Pokemon, throughout your journeys. So, whatever. Anyways, one other thing. Conversation system. Apart from the little story events that can happen, there's also the conversation system. Now, normally you can just chat. Like, the first option as soon as you talk to someone in the part, your party is to chat. You can do that. You get this little thing here. You can control the camera while this happens. You're like, okay, and you respond with your dot 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 or ne. So basically, yeah or that's okay. I'm just going to repeatedly respond with because I don't know why. Normally, though, with these random... If you initiate the conversation, it usually doesn't go too well. I don't... I, don't, I can't read Japanese, so I don't know what these various things are. Let's see if I can succeed at least one. Oh, failed all of them. And now I'm going to run out of talk time instantly. Now, I'm going to have to start running around in circles for a bit. Shut up, Leafa. Alright, let's see. Or maybe if I just stand around doing nothing for a bit. I don't know, you had to run around town for a bit. Basically, what I'm looking for is for her to have a yellow pop-up. Uh, come on, do something. Do something already. Okay, never mind, let's take a look at upgrades for now. Because otherwise I'm going to bore you with running around in circles. Um, the second option just what the hell does this in this, <laughs> this NPC? It's Liz. Um, she upgrades weapons for you. First one is upgrade system. Um, you just pick an item. You can upgrade it. Upgrades are you, you consume various different items. Um, you can see I have <coughs> a whole bunch of various different items that you can upgrade. Um, the amount that, of item that is consumed per upgrade tier it increases. Every single time you try it. Also, you could only do one type of upgrade. So, for example, you can see here that I've done plus strength upgrades. So, I can increase plus strength upgrades to plus five. Or I can completely discard them. Because if you try to do anything other than the upgrade line that you've chosen, you will lose all previous upgrades. So, I'm just going to pick out of this. Let's see, do I have a nice weapon I can upgrade? Sure, why not this one, Dex? I can upgrade it with plus critical. In essence, you will have to discard all previous progress if you want to change the upgrade line of a weapon. Okay, the second one is craft weapon, but I don't have any of the materials for it. Basically, you give her material, she crafts you a weapon of some description. That's about as much help as I can give you, because, sorry, I don't know much. Also, you look in the top right corner, just a couple of mechanical things, but... When it comes to the upgrades, first of all, there is the base upgrade success chance, namely the 40% listed there. Then there is the weapon mod, the, well, not weapon modifier, hammer modifier, basically. This is um, Liz's hammer. I'm not sure what triggers it to become better. I'm assuming it's a story-based event, but basically as she gets better equipment, then she has a higher chance of upgrading, and technically speaking, it improves your upgrade tier. Um, so that's about it. I think it's story-based. I'm not sure if there's a later part in the game where you have to find- do a quest to find her better 
upgrading hammers or whatnot. Oh, I don't know, I have a plus critical sword there. Oh, I don't know, I'm just gonna go in utility because why not? Put my new really upgraded sword into the sub. Is this one? Nope, it's the other one. And there you go, I got new told you, but that's beyond the point. Anyways, back to seeing if Sinon decides to talk. Shut up, Leafa. I don't care about you. Um, I don't know, might as well head back to the house. I think there's some story events there that we can use. Or there might not be because it may have disappeared after I reloaded the game, which would be a pain in the fucking ass. Whatever. Let's see what happens. Nope, I lost the story events. Well, fuck. That's a pain in the ass. Huh, that really is a pain in the ass. Yeah, also what happens is that after you get past a um, floor, what happens is a whole bunch of the characters will get exclamation marks. Oh, yay, finally. Basically, they'll get exclamation marks and you get little story cutscenes. You get this one here. I, I don't know, I think. You can see here I'm gaining quite a bit, filling the enjoy bar a lot faster. Uh, play the yes man, because I'm guessing randomly and I haven't seen any of these dialogues before. Also, if you do well, then talk time will decrease by slightly less. Yep, that looked right to me. The yes man, I guess. Alright, just keep saying yes. Nod head, say yes, be good to girlfriend. I don't know. And that failed miserably as soon as I say do it. <laughs> yeah, that looked right. Hey, and there we go, and I've passed it, though it's only going to decrease slightly. You get more of it, so you get more chances to gain relationship points. Yep, that looked right to me. Nope. Wrong again. Oh well, that's fine. Filled the enjoy bar to plus one, so whatever. You see in the top left, then it's like, that thing, whatever it is, level one. Now when you talk to her again, you go to the other menu, you won't normally get this when you start out. Um, in particular, I believe this option I'm selecting right now just won't be there. But when you go oh, this option uh, that I'm highlighting right now, this is the hold hands. You have to be at the thing thingamabob level 1 at least. You can hold hands with your waifu and then walk around town. Oh hey, there's a, there's a silica event over there. Also, this is just really dumb stuff, but it's just funny to screw with the animation by spinning in circles. <laughs> but whatever. Let's walk on over to Silica, and I'll show you some cut scenery. Don't mind me. There we go. Now I actually managed to select her. Monster, 
りな私頑張りますはい And that's basically how most of these scenes go Um As far as I can tell most of them At least the ones that aren't story like Hard coded into as soon as you leave As soon as you beat the boss this Scenes shows. But I'm talking about the ones where you talk to people. Mostly they seem to be fans or see waifu stuff. As far as I can tell. Regardless. Anyways, you might have also noted that Kirito is not voiced in these. I think that's a design decision to make the player feel like they are the person talking as opposed to the voice actor. Whereas all the waifus have, you know, their waifu voices and stuff. Oh yeah, there's that. Also, you may be noting that right now the frame rate is tanking really hard. Particularly in this, like, one part of the city where all these NPCs show up. This happens particularly often in this area. Although I don't know if it's visible in the recording. But e even so, it, your frame rate will actually tank really hard in this area at certain times of the day clock, which is listed in the top right corner. Um, it'll also occasionally tank in combat, but... And turn into a slideshow, but because this system is so hot key based, for lack of a better term, then it's not really that big of a deal. At any rate, let's get to the verdict, shall we? Who would I recommend this game to? Because Sword Art Online fans, I think that this is the sort of game that you're waiting for, in my opinion. That's what I think. Um. Honestly, though, you do have to contend with the fact that there is a Japanese version, a Chinese version, and an English version. And so, honestly, because the release date of the English version is in the foreseeable future, as long as you have the patience to wait for the English version, I would recommend waiting for it. Because, you know, you will be able to tell whether or not you understood that cutscene just now. And those cutscenes are roughly half of the game. And with the other half being the grind fest, with all the skills and the systems and the level ups and all that shit. So, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying the grind fest because I'm an MMO player. I play, I'm playing this game mostly for the same reason that I played um, Ragnarok Online to unlock skills. Like the whole reason why I'm leveling up my one-handed sword is to get to Iron Will, <laughs> just so I can get the passive. Because I'm an OCD MMOer like that. Th that's it. So this is what my motivation for playing this is. I do also understand a vague amount of spoken Japanese, which is why I really appreciate the voice acting. I would assume that both the Asia and English versions will include the original Japanese voice acting. That is my assumption, though. Either way, I would say that pick the version... That in, that is in the lang in the written language you understand. So don't like there's nothing against the Asia version if you can read Chinese. I'm assuming it's traditional Han and not simplified Han though. I could be horribly wrong. I'll have to double check that. Um, as for the English version though, if you have difficulty understanding, like for example, reading that screen, I would recommend waiting for the English version. However, if you just really want to jump into this, if the idea of grinding for all these carrots on sticks and all the stats and stuff, and you basically want the full MMORPG experience, yes, including the antsy social part where you're kind of alone, <clears throat> but regardless, if you want to have the, a simulated MMO experience, you really can't find a better game than Hollow Fragment. You really can't. Um, so TLDR... This game is for sword, sword Art Online fans and MMORPG fans who don't want to pay a subscription fee. My name is Bean Vsin. Thanks for watching. And I'm just going to run this video longer anyways. Because you know what? Why not? <laughs>